another tutorial. I'm Britta from Z Escape, and as requested for a long time, I've now prepared you a um, video for small lettering. I actually will go down to smaller than four millimeters um, on a standard fabric. I will also show you what kind of material to use, how to set up um, the things in the digitizing software. This will be the main part, and um, give you some more small tricks you might need in the future. Right, let's get started. So I have already imported this part of my design here and I'm going to make like a flag so I put something on top and on the bottom. I switched to the monogram mode and I have already prepared a font from the internet, true type font I converted, went through all the letters once to double check because I'm going to go very small with the letters and then I can use it now. So I will pick this one. You already see it is quite big here. Lift your side and I'm going to type now. Of course, far too big. Select everything, the left mouse button, and let's see, 3.5 millimeters. I'm going to go slightly bigger so that it fits here and center them to each other. So I go to the module mode. With shift, I can select the other one now. And then you have lock center modules. Now I can center them here and they're now centered. So first decision you have to make is if you're going to use a 60 thread or a 75 thread. 60 thread is slightly thicker than the 75 thread, but much thinner than the standard 40 thread that you're probably using. For example, here you can see a very small, but also very thin font. In this case, I would want it even more sharp, so I would take a thread 75. I mean, our example for this video, it's actually a bit more chubby, so you want a bit more volume maybe. So I guess that a uh, thread 60 would be still all right. Why is this important now? Because we have to adjust the density accordingly. So I go here into standard and my stitch type. You see normally the distance you have probably with a 40 thread between 4 and 3.6. Now we need it much more dense because the thread is thinner. So I'm going to use maybe 2.8. I switch something depending on the shape between 2.5 and 3. And you see now you have already much more stitches. So when you use a 75 thread, I would go between 2 maybe until 2.5. But up to, again, like I say, up to the shape you're using. Another thing we have to set here in the parameters is our underlay. You're not going to use a fill underlay. There's no space, basically. See, yeah, so we have only 3.6 millimeters here. So imagine how much space you have here in this area. No fill underlay. We have a running underlay. And if there's space, you can go around the contour. But if it's thin, very thin lettering, you can also go on the center line. OK, you see now it will run through. Now you also see this stitch here is very long, so probably it will fall out of the letter. In order to avoid this, we make this much shorter. 2.8, say OK. And now you see the stitches are even shorter here. Let's have another close look at the letters. If I go here to the text parameters, you can of course check here the character space. So I, if I make it bigger, you see they're wider apart. The big secret about small lettering is also you know, normally you think, okay, I want to trim between the letters so that you don't really see the thread jumping over. But every trim also means fixing stitches. So if you have only three and a half millimeter space in height, you don't want to add other stitches that you don't need. So the cleanest way, if possible, is that you don't trim. So you see, for example, between the M and the U, there is this little stitch here in the middle. I say fix only when they're one millimeter apart. All these letters here, they're closer to each other, so they will not trim. And now the big secret, I want a stitch in connection. This means here, from one to the other letter, I will not carry my thread all the way over. I will actually in the middle stitch in one, so it's actually dragged into the fabric. So I want a stitch in the connection and or a dot of the eye. You don't want to cut in between those either, okay? Another thing you can play with is here the um, pull compensation. Don't make it too much, then it will look too bulky because it's still very thin and small here what we're doing. If necessary, add some pull compensation here. I already did some testing, so I went up a little more with the pull compensation because I have rather bulky letters. But if you make fine swirly lettering like you've seen in the example, don't give it too much. Don't make it too fat. I will add another lettering here. 
I will use a different color. This is actually too big for my taste. I will mark everything and make it 3.3 maybe. Okay, that looks good. Now I go to my order of embroidery. I want my other lettering here in the other color. Right, here's another little secret for you. You see the O and the U is slightly smaller than the N. This is because it's always pushing in the stitch direction. Now this is an N direction here, so it only gets thinner but not shorter, whereas the U gets shorter here and the O gets shorter at both ends. To even this out, we will shorten the N by a few stitches in the, we call them N direction. Therefore we have, if I mark everything here, under extended the end direction. Yeah, here, let's try it with 0 0.1. And you see it takes away the last stitches at the, yeah, at the end of the satin stitches. Okay, now the design is ready to be loaded into the machine. When you do this, you have to be super careful with the setting up. R1 here, and then from USB key in my case, I have a tubular frame in my machine. I go down to my um, design. And now it's very important that you choose optimize with user-defined values. Normally, I guess you take uh, default values. I will show you in a minute where the difference is. So I take this one. You go to more settings and here you have actually cleaning activated. The standard value is always cleaning by five increments. So if the stitches in your design are shorter than five increments, 0 0.5 millimeters, the machine will clean it out. But now as we have small, small stitching, we want to keep the small stitches. So I click on, I press on cleaning again, and now this one becomes active and I say clean after three increments should be fine. So stitches that are shorter than three increments will be cleaned out. Accept settings, optimize with the set values. I want no modification and I accept what I see. Right, we have already talked about what's important for the digitizing. Now when it comes to the machine, of course, we have to also consider a few things. First of all, you have to pick a thread. We have the 60 thread and the 75 thread, which is even thinner than the 60 thread. Um, we work with the main thread manufacturers here in Germany, the Arman, um, Gunold and Madeira. They all offer different sorts of um, thicknesses. Now this also becomes important for the needle later. Uh, but first of all, I come to point two, which is actually thread tension. So compared to the other standard thread, we take the tension rather off, so we make it rather loose tension. Um, this you do on the bobbin as well as the top thread. So this is basically, if you do big steps, if you're very far away from your standard tension, if you only need to do fine tuning, take these ones here. This normally, from what I know, no tension at all. Just let it run through here. Point three is choosing the right needle. If you decide for the 60 thread, which we actually gonna use for our design, um, you would pick either a 65 needle or you can go down to 60, depending on your material, see what you like most. Point four, we have actually different kinds of materials we want to embroider. I have now a rather stiff fabric, so that's fine for this. If you go, however, on a pique or on a more elastic fabric, definitely minimum two layers of tearaway fabric, uh, tearaway backing. You can even go up to three layers. You can take a weblon, you can, yeah, super stiff. Plus, if you go on coarse material with even more structure, you put a water-soluble foil on top. This is the big secret to, to the success of your th small lettering. Yeah, you can just hold it on top, start the machine. Soon as it's done, you can take it off. So we've checked the thread, we've checked all the machine setup. We have a bobbin thread in which is full. Last but not least, last point on your checklist, make the machine run sm slower. Make it down to 700 stitches because the needle is much thinner. So yeah, give the machine a little time and now we're ready to go. guys that's it for today thank you very much for watching i will actually leave you the contact of the thread manufacturers and the needles in the end of the video 
If you still have questions, please contact me here uh, via comment section or contact me on Instagram or zsk.com. Thanks again for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.